Welcome to Cataclysm Now. My name is Ryan, and tonight we'll be continuing the playthrough for Battle of the Bulge 1944, published by Worthington Games and designed by Dan Forney. We left off at the beginning of turn five, which is December 20th. It's overcast, so the Americans won't have any air power. The Germans have lost uh, all their supporting artillery from the West Wall. Uh, in terms of reinforcements, they're only getting a single armored brigade for the Seventh Army. For the Americans, uh, they will be getting an entire uh, armored division, the Third Armored Division, which will be coming on uh, somewhere um, in the north, um, depending, uh, either N1, N2, or N3. The Germans have this round 18 resource points versus the Americans 14 resource points so they've been slowly going up and the Germans are slowly going slowly going down and they'll achieve parity or crossover to parity in uh, turn seven so um, before we get into German strategy and to see what they are going to do uh, beginning on turn five I'm playing with one of the optional rules um, the optional rules is uh, section 18 so case four German fuel shortage. So beginning on turn five, uh, December 20th, the German player rolls one or two dice to determine which of his armor units are out of supply. Uh, so I'm gonna roll uh, one six-sided die. We get a one, which means the second Panzer Division is out of supply. Where is the second Panzer Division? Yep, we're rolling four. Yep, all right, so I found it. Just making sure it wasn't the SS Panzer Division. So this is actually kind of a, a blow to German designs on the southern end of the map that uh, second Panzer Division just southeast of Bastogne has run into fuel shortages. All right, so the Germans are going to have to make some decisions in terms of where to uh, pivot. They can either push. I don't think they're going to really push. I'm probably going to have them turn south and try to eliminate uh, the 82nd. Because the rest of their advance is going to depend on capturing these roads and making sure that they are completely in supply uh, for their push westward. And with the 82nd at Manhay throwing down a zone of control, uh, there's an interdiction here at this crucial crossroad. So they're going to want to have to take that. And of course, Bastong. So the hinge of the defense lies at these two points. Now, the Germans could cross here and start pushing across this clear terrain, but the supply rules you have to trace, uh, you can't be more than three hexes away from an in-supply road. So we obviously have an in-supply road flowing, well, this is throwing a zone of control down here. So we have an um, in-supply tenuous, really, coming from E6, through here, down, up, and then it can come down a little bit here. But if they were to break out across these rivers, they would quickly be out of supply because the furthest they could get supply at this point is to stretch a road here. So that's why they have to take uh, Manhay. So when that falls, they'll be able to extend their supply. Um, the radius of their supply via the roads. So gonna go ahead, do some refitting, uh, play some reinforcements, and uh, we'll see what the Germans can do. Okay, the Germans uh, moving pretty boldly here. Essentially have abandoned, um, I shouldn't say abandoned, but have swung south. They're leaving the 12th SS to sort of guard the, um, the northern flank of their um, Central thrust here. This um, airborne unit has moved into Spa, getting another victory point. 
um, and then they've moved a bunch of panzer units down the road to help support this assault against the 82nd. The Germans are down to five resource points. They're going to be launching an attack against Manhei and then uh, Bastung here. So I thought I'd just roll it out to show um, a little bit how the combat system works. Um, again, over here, the 106 is just holding out. So at this point, they're just tying up those units. Um, and basically the only way that supply, because they're still interdicting, this crossroads here, the only way supply is really flowing through is from E6 and then down through here. So uh, let's go ahead and count up the dice here. So for the Americans, they are going to have four dice. Since they're in Manhay, uh, the town gives them one. Forest there is just subtracting one from all the attacking dice. So we're going to spend two because it's going to be a combined attack because we have die coming in from the um, third, from the sixth panzer. So we'll flip all these over. Actually, I don't know why I have a marker on there. It's not their turn. So all together we got five, nine, 13. 13, we'll do, yeah, that's 16. Minus one, so it's 12 dice. That's a lot of dice. Versus uh, the, Airbor the Airborne's four. So we're gonna roll in um, spats of six. And we'll see what they get here. It's one hit. And the other six. All right, that is, so in this case, armored, when the absence of an armor, they go to an infantry, but if an armored unit is involved, they have to. So that is four. So altogether, the 82nd Airborne um, is rendered combat ineffective and is destroyed. We'll go ahead and take them off. And um, the, the rough thing about that is once a division or any unit is knocked off the board, it's uh, it can't come back via reinforcements. So that's a huge blow that completely rips open um, the front right there. It's not over yet though. We've got four dice firing back here. And the Americans go down swinging with uh, two infantry hits. Actually, do we even have an infantry? Uh, we do not. So actually, that doesn't count for anything. It's pretty rough. All right, we'll continue uh, with uh, the turn. We'll go ahead and see what they can do against Bastong. And then um, we'll see what the Americans can respond to. Because again, that was... Uh, that's... That's pretty bad for them because now with Manhei clear, the rest of this is pretty open. So um, even if they can't get their su their overt sudden victory death, um, it's possible that they could just um, gain enough uh, victory points uh, to get 14 or more. Okay, the uh, Germans launched combat against Bastong with the out of supply uh, second Panzer Division, uh, it was it was a wash. They threw four dice against Bastong, um, maybe five. And then the um, 101st threw back four. Uh, no results uh, across the board. So the Americans are left with the unenvious task of seeing what the heck to do here because we've got, what, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five, six full strength Panzer divisions um, barreling down. Um, they didn't capture Manhattan because there's no advancing after combat. And the Americans uh, only get one uh, armored division coming on. So uh, we'll, we'll see what they can do. 
Okay, the Americans took some calculated risks um, here just south of Verviers, and it paid off really well. Um, moved the 30th and the 9th Infantry Divisions down uh, to strike the 12th SS Panzer. Really, the, the odds really weren't in their favor, but they were able to inflict two hit loss or two um, step losses on the Panzer unit for the cost of one. And considering that's going to take four resource, resource points to get back to full strength um, is considerable, to say the least. I wanted to put a little bit of pressure um, because if the Germans lose essentially this artery here, um, their entire offensive goes up in smoke, at least the, the primary prong here. This is sort of ground to a halt. Um, so that definitely is going to put the pressure there to at least divert some resource points too shore that up. Um, this unit here can't get to Verveer because that would be even two, um, four, and they couldn't get quite into there. And that would be moving into here would be three and then be another three uh, to get into Verveer. Um, also, um, this was less risky, but the 10th Armored Division pulled back over the river here uh, that, at the price of um, all their movement points, six. And then I uh, was able to launch an attack uh, in conjunction with the 101st, inflicting a step loss uh, on the 26th Infantry Division. Here, um, the Americans are in a better position than I realized because the, um, yes, these are wide open plains here, but the river that cuts through here is a real pain for um, German armor, specifically because without passage of a bridge, it costs three additional movement points for the armor. So if the first SS here, they move one here, they move into this square here, or this hex here, that's uh, three because it's an enemy zone of control. They have four, they have two movement points left. They can't. Even if they tried to outflank it, because they can extend supply from this hex here, since it's out of enemy zones of control and it can connect to a road. It'd be one, two, three, and then it would be three additional ones to cross over um, the river plus one for the clear hex. So it'd be four. So essentially, unless the Germans start closer to the river or adjacent to the river, they won't be able to crossover. So already they are stymied, even if they want to get thrust up back up to the northeast towards, uh, or northwest I should say, towards Liege, uh, this river here is an impediment. And obviously with the presence of um, Amer American divisions here at the crossings, it just made sense to move down the forces to the bridge crossings to prevent that. So in two turns time, the Germans will be able to push over uh, and maybe flank or bring enough to bear. But um, the Americans, again, I think have been able to stanch the bleeding. But we'll go ahead. We'll take off the uh, markers um, and we'll move on to uh, the next turn. We'll roll for um, fuel shortages for the Germans and uh, we'll see what they can do. Concerning that it's uh, turn 6, December 21st, and they only have up through Christmas to achieve their objectives, um, the Germans went pretty aggressive. First, they were able to um, get a reinforcement here to the 12th SS, um, predictably diverting a little bit of resources away from the main effort in the West. Um, here, the good old 106 finally succumbed. Um, after a concentric attack, uh, tying up you know, much of the uh, infantry support for the uh, 5th Panzer Army. So um, I'd say that the stubborn defense um, of 106 really contributed to the Americans stopping the Germans so far. Now they do have full two full arteries open, so the pressure um, to, um, hold back against the Americans, 
up in the north is less. And they still want to keep a firm line here, but um, if they are pushed back, uh, the supply can be traced up through here. So uh, as you can see, the Germans launched attacks um, down the line. Uh, they weren't able to cross the uh, Orth River, uh, but since the third uh, army was, in, or the third panzer was in open terrain, uh, they went ahead and launched attacks, only scored one hit, while the uh, third was able to score two hits. So stubborn defense here. Didn't make sense for these two to attack, just considering the penalties of attacking across the river and into rough terrain were too steep um, to expose themselves. So that what they'll probably have to do is cross the river and then launch attacks. I don't know if which one necessarily will, but we'll get to that um, later. The Lair uh, Panzer Division was the one that was out of supply. So I also, to avoid the uh, doubling of the cost of attacking or coordinating between armies, had the uh, 5th Panzer Army concentrate here and the 6th Panzer Army concentrate here. Launched attacks, uh, actually, um, 116th and 26th launch attacks against the 10th. Inflicted two step losses um, at the cost of one infantry. Not too bad. Um, this wasn't necessarily the best attack, but the Germans are just have, going to have to rely on um, the dice coming their way. And you never want to be in a position when you are relying on um, low odds attacks, but this is where they found themselves. Bastong still is holding out. Contemplated shifting and moving them around, but I didn't want to compl I couldn't, I don't want to complicate the supply line. Um, and then potentially leave um, uh, like the 560th open to counterattack and severing the um, supply line. So keeping it rather frontal here. And with the rest of the resource points, um, the Germans were content for a while to keep the seventh Panzer army just sort of idle, or not the Panzer, the seventh army idle, but they decided to move down and to attack. Um, they did cut off the fourth infantry uh, in Eternach, and um, maybe they will wear the job. The reason the why they're concentrating now is they may need these two uh, victory points because at this time let's count up all the victory points that the Germans have they have one two three four um I did see that four five one two I coming there three four five yep they have five uh, that's well short of the 14 they need. Um, so they may have, to, they're, they're just going to have to get aggressive. Um, potentially next turn, if there are resource points to spare, they may even have to move against Maladi or Manchao. Um, as unending, enviable as that is. Obviously, though, they're going to want to have the brunt of their success here. So the... Uh, Germans will have to figure out what they're going to do. But that is not until the next turn. Right now, uh, the Americans have to go. So I'll clear the markers and um, do reinforcements, refits for the Americans, and see how they can position themselves and maybe even counterattack a bit. The Americans were able to close in more of the German advance. They didn't launch any attacks along the river here but they are throwing down zones of control so that um, when the Germans do cross, they'll have to stop. Um, so that'll buy them another turn. It's important because in turn seven, that's when the British come on. Um, uh, the special rules dictate the uh, British can't actually move um, more than one hex beyond the Meuse River here. But the important thing is, is that when they come on, they essentially will guard three um, sudden victory hexes for the Germans effectively, not 100%, but effectively closing off that victory. And then I'll free up American forces to move uh, where they see fit 
to counterattack. Uh, speaking of counterattacks, the Americans did uh, here in the south. Uh, outside of Baston, they actually completely eliminated the 26th um, Infantry Division of the 5th Panzer. Um, the first uh, completely destroyed unit of the Germans, um, but at a considerable cost. They lost a uh, step loss in armor, so the 10th is down to one step, so they're dangerously low. And then um, the Airborne uh, lost a step as well. So a little more tenuous, maybe they shouldn't have made that attack, but uh, the, the 10th is open to destruction, but... Um, again, later this turn, we have uh, not only the um, British coming on uh, on the 7th, but uh, a slew of other reinforcements. Um, in the south here with the 7th Army, it was a wash to stay in Edernach, and it was, wasn't was worth keeping the, um, the infantry division there to be destroyed. Uh, so he fell back so he could... Um, reinforce at some point and potentially counterattack. The Americans aren't too worried about ceding. They can they can afford essentially to cede a town or two. Um, we are going to keep this armored brigade here though. So really the uh, the clock is running out for the for the Germans. So we'll clear the counters. We'll move on to turn seven, which is December twenty second. It's also the last day of. Uh, Cloudy skies, overcast, so the Americans um, and the British, but mostly the Americans, will have um, air tokens, three air tokens uh, to use per turn. So that's six extra dice for any combat, um, two per air token. So the Germans really have to make it happen. So like I said, we'll clear the uh, markers and we'll move on to turn seven. It rolled for German supply and this time it was the uh, ninth SS. Uh, Panzer Division that was out of supply only chose to refit a, a couple of infantry units um, but uh, at looking at the map and analyzing the map I think the Germans may have found the closest possibility they can get to victory so what they're going to do is there are they're going to ford um, it costs three to go in there because of zone of control plus three for the river, so it's six, it'll be six to move in here. And if they can concentrically attack, and if, and this is a big if, this is not likely to happen, a big if, but if they can fully eliminate the third armored division, this road is free of enemy zones of control. Meaning that the second SS, using road movement, um, that's uh, gonna be half uh, a movement point per armor can move 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and off the map. So that's what the Germans are going to pursue. Uh, absent that failing, um, or if that fails, uh, they'll still push to gain territory. Um, we're going to be moving these units up to help support. Um, and they're going to try to take some towns here in the south, the 7th Army. So it's basically going to become a scramble for points if they can't accomplish that. On second thought, looking at that, that's probably not the best maneuver for the Germans, because uh, even though they can afford to move west across that river, you check supply for at the time of activation or the time of combat. So at that point, if I had moved those two, um, there are zones of control that are thrown around the first SS, and it would have been out of uh, supply and for armor that's uh, minus two to the dice so not really worth that that really decreases a low odds attack or well, not a low odds attack but a low odds in terms of wiping out the unit but then we'll put the first ss into a dire position so they're not going to do that um we're just going to reshift the german strategy just to to grab for points they're still going to try to break through um but with that, uh, their prospects are dimming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the game came down to one roll. The third uh, Panzer Grenadiers crossed the river. There's an attack. I always underestimate. There's actually only the, the movement penalty from um, crossing rivers rather high for 
armored unit, it's three. But the uh, attacking across is not, it's only one die, so it's effectively the amount of a forest. So really was able to bring, let's see, that's eight, 11, uh, that was nine dice to bear. Uh, and three of them were hits. So if one more uh, armored hit, which effectively comes down to a six, you know, um, then um, that would have been removed and then it would have been a clear road all the way to the west. So uh, this could be the high water mark uh, for the Germans here during the Battle of the Bulge. But it did not come to pass. Uh, the third army barely hanging on. Um, didn't inflict any losses either. So um, they took quite a beating. Elsewhere, um, the 10th armor held on. Uh, no hits scored against it and vice versa. Uh, a little surprising there. Um, here to the east with the divisions that were caught up trying to eliminate the 106 have dispersed to support their um, respective uh, armies. And down here, the 7th army uh, was able to not only seize Edernach, but they were able to expel the um, Americans from Edelbrook, which brings them up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven victory points. Still a solid seven behind. Um, it's interesting how this game is going so far because w one moment I feel like, um, you know, the Americans are on the ropes and the Germans are about to break through, but then they'll throw down his own control or they'll hold out or they'll do something that throws a wrench uh, into the, the gears for the Germans. Um, I, I've already done a review on the game, but this is just highlighting why I like the game so much that the, there's a, a reliance on the road systems and that how, you know, a regiment or a brigade can hold up an entire army, um, especially um, in, in this terrain. That really wouldn't work in other games. Obviously, something that's, uh, you know, a little more wide open, say like a Polish game, uh, where the... the um, Initial dispositions of the of the Polish army uh, during the thirty nine campaign, where it was in pretty open flat terrain, which was in very good defensive territory. But this, because of the roads, because of the rough terrain, um, and the the layers of uh, rivers, um, allow a defense in depth and allow fewer numbers to hold off larger numbers. And yes, uh, we are relying on some pretty fickle dice, but for a game this. Um, complex or should I say not complex uh, that's that's all fine and well um, so essentially that is the entirety of the German turn what they're willing to to throw at anything else that they try to attack would just be sort of um, a waste of um, resource points so we're going to go ahead and clear the markers and um, see what uh, the Americans do, will do in response Okay, for the Americans, I've refitted uh, a couple of armored, um, put some on the third, uh, tenth, so they are now at sort of medium strength. But we've got a lot of reinforcements coming on the board, like I indicated before. Um, the British are coming on in force here in the corner. Uh, they should be able to shut down the three bridges here, um, and then the Americans should have enough coverage here at Liege to prevent a breakout. Um, but what the Americans are going to do after this will be interesting because they have a fair amount of firepower coming onto the south. Uh, they have the 80th um, coming just south of the Neuf Chateau. And then we've got uh, an entire uh, fourth armored division that uh, will be steaming up um, to hit um, the 5th Panzer Army's flank and then um, opted to take the 26th and... Um, Maybe not take these towns back, uh, but to at least contest the area so um, the 7th Army can't abandon their positions and move forward. Um, so we'll see what the Americans can do uh, here on the 7th turn, uh, which is December 22nd, 1944. The Germans took a beating this turn. Um, they lost three units uh, off the board. The third uh, Pan Panzer Grenadiers that had crossed through over here, it was exposed uh, in the open and uh, was eliminated. 
And then uh, we had a couple Seventh Army actually. It paid off having the 26th uh, Infantry Division come up. Wound up knocking out a um, armored brigade at the cost of a uh, one step loss, and then the fourth infantry was able to uh, knock out the three hundred and fifty second um, infantry division. In infantry division, um, definitely putting in a little pressure here. I don't know, I imagine a breakthrough here, but again, um, soaking up resources that the Germans could use elsewhere. Uh, we had. Um, that son of a bitch Patton and his goddamn third army, uh, comes steaming up the road, uh, wound up knocking into the second, um, uh, Panzer Division, uh, took two step losses, didn't destroy it outright, um, but it did inflict two infantry losses, one on the 101st and the other, uh, on the 80th here. Um, and in terms of coverage for... Protecting the Muse, um, British uh, infantry divisions, two of them here, and one um, guards uh, armored division are now protecting three of the crossings. They can't go any further than that. That's the, as far as they can go. They can't contribute to the battle, but they are at this juncture um, really good at uh, preventing the Germans from achieving a sudden death victory. Uh, we wind up moving the uh, 517th um, Airborne Regiment up to Liège. Um, so here, we effectively have caught the Germans in a net. We've knocked out uh, an armored unit here. Uh, we've got reinforcements steaming up from the south, which is rolling up from the south. Uh, and now the next three turns are clear, which... Um, you know, in combination with the two artillery units that the um, that the Americans have, along with uh, their three, that's eight extra die. They are rolling in particular combats. Can't all be dedicated to one, but still, uh, that's some extra firepower. I'm um, still going to play on at least another turn, perhaps two, to see how it goes. Um, and if nothing really changes, then... Um, we may call it early, just because the um, victory for the Germans is still really out of reach. Uh, let's count up their victory points. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they're still at seven, so they have to double, um, which at this point, they, they just don't have the time. That's seizing effectively two towns per turn without losing anything. So... Uh, but we'll clear their markers off. We'll move on to turn eight. We'll do uh, refit reinforcements, and then we'll check in to see what the Germans uh, have been able to accomplish. Turn eight, December 23rd, 1944. Uh, was a bloodbath. Really uh, going out with a bang here. The For starters, the Germans were able to finally destroy um, the third armored division. Uh, and they crossed over and were able to seize Marsh. Uh, they're really overextended, though. Their supply lines, I mean, they're not going to be able to hold it long before the the Americans counterattack. They did up their victory count, though, uh, to one, one. Well, we'll get to that here. So they were able to seize that. Um, they sapped the 9th Infantry in the north here uh, by 75%. Uh, at the cost of just one armored step loss. Um, basically, pedal to the metal. The Germans were trying to seize as much territory as they can. Basically, um, looking for the uh, the roll, or the luck of the roll. Here, um, an airborne um, division crossed over, and they assaulted the uh, 7th Armored in Malmody, and that was just... Uh, the Germans took incredible losses there. Um, out of supply, the two, uh, starting on turn 8 through 10, the fuel shortage problems become more severe, so you roll for two um, divisions to see if they're out of supply. And the, and the uh, other one here was the first SS. So it was able to participate in the attack, uh, and then after the armored unit was eliminated, it moved south. Um, 
um, right across the, the bridge here. Bastong, uh, all the while the, the Americans were using their allied air power, they exhausted all of it. Uh, Bastong did fall, but not before um, eliminating um, another German um, infantry division. So the 101st was eliminated and Bastong was seized. So that's another two victory points. Also, other elements of the 5th Panzer Army were able to uh, scoot up the road here to help. This is actually a pretty strong position. Um, I don't know how long Bastong will be able to hold, considering it can be attacked from multiple directions. Uh, but the real weakness um, is uh, here. Uh, interestingly enough, that's where the greatest promise for German victory, but that's sort of petered out now with casualties and fuel shortages and a um, uh, a surge in allied reinforcements. So we'll go ahead and uh, clear the markers and we'll see what the Americans can do. They have uh, 18 resource points um, and they actually have Oh, another armored division, another infantry division coming on the board. Um, and then from there, turns nine and 10, there's no, there's no more reinforcements. That's all that, that's all she wrote in terms of extra units coming onto the board. So uh, we'll clear this off. We'll play the American turn and then we'll see where we stand uh, at the end there to see if the Germans have any chance in attaining victory in the last two turns. The Americans were able to counterattack pretty strongly. Uh, they got really lucky and completely wiped out the uh, Panzer unit that was there. They moved in to retake it. Um, they tried to retake Bastong, but um, and only inflicted two step losses on the Second Panzer Army. Um, still devastating, though. I shouldn't say devastating, but. The Germans are taking losses they can't necessarily readily replace. Uh, in the north, uh, the airborne unit was eliminated from Spa. We shifted some units over. And um, really, though, with the elimination of that Panzer Army there, it was out of supply. It could have extricated itself, though, eventually. Um, but the tip of the spear has been essentially been blunted. Um, at some point, there's no more reinforcements coming on. But the Americans should be able to cross here in a turn or two or exploit it. Um, but at this point, with the Germans only having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the nine. So their apex was 10 uh, victory points and they needed 13 minimally for a draw. Um, at this point, it's hard to see how they do it. Um, but I'll go ahead and play the next turn uh, just to see what it looks like. I'll clear the markers and uh, we'll see what the Germans can do. They're going to have... Um, they're going to have 16 resource points uh, for the rest of the game. And then the Americans are going to have 18. The Americans, of course, um, their artillery resets. Uh, and their leader resets. Uh, we've got Patton down here. Uh, and then they've got all their air power that resets as well. So um, the Germans are definitely going to be cautious in terms of attacking. I don't necessarily see where they can break out and get the points. But like I said, I'll play one more turn and then uh, see where we stand. Okay, this is the end of the German turn, uh, ninth turn. Uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve, of course. And um, to be honest, I don't see any way that the Germans can pull this out. Um, they've got nine victory points. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, uh, they need five more to win. And there's just there's just no way that they're going to get it. Um, did launch some attacks south of Bastogne. Um some losses taken by the 4th Armored, some losses taken by the 10th Armor, some losses taken by the 30th. The, it's just back and forth. It, it's attritional at this point. The, there's no way that they're going to get the breakthrough to bust through the zones of control. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the markers so we can take a clean look at the at the lines. Um, I'm not I'm not going to play the last American turn um, again just because um, the game uh, can't be won essentially at this point by the Germans. Now if we've been doing uh, potentially the spoiling attack. Um, Obviously, they have to... I mean, it's shorter. Actually, that doesn't... Never mind. That's what I like, actually, about the, these. I haven't really played these. Um, they're shorter. They're six, six, seven in turns, but this one's the full ten. So, we'll go ahead and clear the markers off so we can get a clean look at the map, and we'll do a quick debrief. Okay, here are the uh, final positions. Uh, midway, turn nine. And uh, the Germans didn't achieve the apex that they did historically. Um, this is not the closest game. Interestingly enough, this is not the closest game that I've solitaired uh, in terms of points. Uh, I think my first game that I played, it came down to um, just one short of a draw. So the, um, the Allies were able to get 12 points. Um, or I'm sorry, the, the Germans were able to get 12 points. Um, so they were just one short of a draw. In that game, they got bogged down a lot in the north and the south. They were able to get those points. I think they were actually able to cap Revere, capture Revere and Bastong, and that's what really elevated them. And um, some fights uh, over St. Hubert and uh, Neuve Chateau, Ch Chateau became really important um, and ultimately decided the campaign. This one was a little different, that it never really came down to the points. However, there were a couple moments where I thought the Germans would be able to break through uh, early on uh, and get through Liege. And then even there was a small, tiny possibility that they'd be able to break through uh, and get um, all the way to the west before the arrival of the British. Uh, what really spelled trouble, though, for the Germans were the smaller actions uh, and the regiments uh, and armored brigades that just wouldn't give up. Uh, the 106th lasted forever. Um, that effect was probably mitigated that they could get, get supplies in otherwise, but that did tie up three or four divisions for, or I shouldn't say divisions, but three or four um, division slash brigades that could have been used elsewhere. Um, and then, yeah, there were a couple crucial, there was one crucial turn, I can't, can't remember what turn it was, where um, an armored brigade didn't fall and it, and it put some people out of supply and it really just, threw a wrench into the, the, the German uh, gears for what they needed to do. And you can imagine if they hadn't had that happen and that armored power would have been able to move westward, then um, the Allies would be in, in big trouble. Also didn't help that one of the big armored thrusts as it was going north um, didn't get through to the Liège and then it had to divert its attention south and then um, when I mentioned earlier that uh, even though this is clear terrain, if you have a zone of control and a river, uh, those armored units just, they're really limited in their mobility. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy this game. This is my I think, fourth or fifth playthrough. Um, solitaire, I haven't played it with an opponent yet, but it's uh, easy enough to teach, uh, I, I would imagine, and the concepts are really simple. Uh, but there is a depth of strategy here. Um, and most importantly for me, one of the reasons I play war games is that uh, there's a level of uh, historicity that matches uh, with the gameplay. So this is able to encapsulate the, the essence of the Ardennes uh, counteroffensive um, with a little bits of chrome here and there. Um, yeah, so uh, that is the end of my playthrough for Battle of Bulge 1944 by Worthington Games. Uh, designed by Dan Forney. Uh, thanks for tuning in.